Okay, start making sure you're comfortable that you can take your all your concentration in towards your breath, just to begin with. Soften your jaw, relax the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And start by taking gentle breaths in and out of your nose. So if you're in child's pose, big toes touching, knees wide. And you can have the arms out in front or you can make a cushion with your arms but just by holding the elbows and resting your forehead on top of the forearms. Breathing in and out the nose. Every time you exhale, trying to press the bum back towards the heels a bit more. And as you breathe, just notice where the breath sits in the body, gradually trying to draw it down to the base of the ribs. So you feel the rib cage expanding and moving out laterally on the inhale. And then feel a compression as everything draws down on the exhale. As you breathe, just adding a slight pause at the top of each breath in. And then after the exhale, adding another pause. And that might just be for a couple of seconds or maybe a bit longer if you're more comfortable with it. And as you use that style of breath, just feeling everything start to slow down and relax. Notice as you breathe in through the nose, the air is cool. And as you exhale, you'll feel that warmth of the air as it's leaving the body. Just finding those subtle connections with the breath, helping to take your mind off anything from the day that you've had. And instead just becoming a bit more present in your body right now on the mat. So it's always good just to set yourself a little intention for your practice, which might be something you take with you off your mat as well. And that can just be something simple like building a connection with your breath. That's something you struggle with. Allowing yourself to be more present or dedicating this hour to yourself or to someone else. Let that intention sit with you for the whole practice. Maybe it's something you make more time for off the mat as well. So from child's pose, we're just going to walk the hands around to one side as far as you can and open up through the lateral trunk. So press the bum to the heels, reach the arms around, expand out through the ribs, and breathe into it. From there, walk the hands around to the other side as far as you can, expanding through the ribs, pressing the bum back to the heels. And then bring your hands back to the center. From here, we'll come up onto all fours, nice and slow. You can keep your eyes closed if you need to for a bit longer. And we'll make some circles through the trunk of the body. So nice big circles rolling around pressing out through the ribs, drawing the belly down at the bottom and then rounding out through the back at the top. Then change direction, go the other way. Nice big circles. Then from there, come to a neutral tabletop position. We'll start by tucking the bum under and curling up through the spine. Wrap the shoulders across the back and tuck your chin. Then tilt the pelvis forward, drawing the belly down, working your way up through the spine into an extension, tucking the shoulder blades down into the back. Tuck the bum on the exhale, curling up, rounding into that spine flexion. And tilt the pelvis forwards back into that spine extension. One more of each, tucking the bum, curling up, really manipulating and working through one vertebra at a time or we'll visualize that's what's happening. 
peeling your way through the spine nice and slow. And then from there, come back to a neutral tabletop position. Just hook the toes and stretch the soles of the feet and the wrists at the same time. Wiggle about into it. You can make circles, move back and forth, side to side, anything that feels good. Just open them up, grip the ground with the fingers. And then also onto the backs of the hands. You can go into a kneeling position like I am here. You can have the hands close to your body to make it feel a bit easier. Walk them further away and load through the wrists a bit more to challenge up those positions. You can even go into a full plank if that feels okay for you. And then from there, unhook the toes, shake the hands out. You can make some circles with the wrists. Nice and slow, changing direction, loosen them off. Spread the fingers and manipulate through the fingers, just wiggle them about, make a figure of eight, change direction, challenge that coordination a little bit as well, and get some heat into the intrinsic muscles in your hands. And then from there, we'll come back down. So into a tabletop position, hook your toes, send your bum to your heels and lift your hips, come into a gentle downward dog. You can have a nice deep bend at the knees, doesn't matter if your heels don't touch the floor. Pin the belly button in towards the spine, lock the lower rib cage down, and then spread the shoulders across the back. So shoulder blades wrap across the back. Walk through the feet. We'll make some waves through the spine from here. So you're thinking about manipulating through each vertebra. Think of those cat and cows. Begin from the base of the spine and start to curl your way up to the top. Once you get to the top, just bend the legs slightly take the bum back, take the chest through. So I curl all the way up to the top. Once it gets to the top, bend the knees, take the chest through, head comes through, lift the hips. But you can kind of improvise this one. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. Just have a bit of a wiggle about. Do you want to open up any areas that might still feel a bit tight? You can rock side to side. Anything that feels good for your body. And then from there, we'll come all the way up into a high plank position. Hands are under shoulders, knees are lots of, we've got our legs extended, but the muscles above the knees are pulling up, and then we're wrapping the shoulders across the back. Breathe into it. Keep drawing the lower belly in, keep engaging the thighs, keep tucking the bum under. Push the ground away. And then on your exhale, you can lower the knees, or if you're feeling good already, just keep the knees lifted. We're going to take the shoulders forward, bend the arms, come down. But you're going to hover with your chest just off the floor. Push down, squeeze your butt, push the floor away as much as you can. Holding it, a couple more breaths. Building some strength into the bottom of that low chaturanga position. And then from there, come into an upward dog. Engage the tops of the legs. Lengthen through the spine, pushing down, lift the eyes. Lift the hips, downward dog. If it gets too much, you can just lower your knees and have a little breather. From here, we're going to make some spine waves again, curling all the way up through the spine, pushing back. Maybe trying the other way. Mix it up. And then from there on your next one, curl up to a high plank position, breathing into it, pushing down, tucking the bum. Pin in the lower belly in, squeezing the thighs. On your next exhale, lower down, hover the chest just off the floor, keep pushing. Tuck the bum under, make sure you don't stick your bum up in the air. And then transition through to an upward dog. Lift your hips, downward dog. We're doing that once more, but you can just hold your downward dog for a moment. Breathing into it, wiggle about, we'll add a little twist on this one. So from your downward dog, reach one hand towards the opposite leg, that can be the thigh, calf, or the ankle, anchor the head underneath the armpit, breathing into it. And then reach your forwards and switch. And reach the arm forwards and we'll make some waves again with the spine curling up pushing back, building that heat into the body. 
Curl up to a high plank position, squeeze the bum to get under. Pushing the floor away. Let the shoulders lead, bend the arms, Chaturanga Dandasana, but with a hover in the bottom. Keep the eyes lifted, push down as hard as you can. And then come through into upward dog. Lift your hips, downward dog. From there, raise up to the tiptoes, lower the knees to the mat, and rest in Balasana just for a few breaths. Gentle inhales, gentle exhales. Pressing the bum towards the heels. From your child's pose, you can take the hands up to the top of the mat, nice and wide, onto the fingertips. From there, you can lift your bum and then take just the chest down into a thoracic extension. Keep the belly button pulled in, keep the eyes lifted. Stretching into the front of the shoulders, opening up through the thoracic spine, trying to keep the eyes lifted. And then from there, bring the body up, spread the fingers, hook the toes, lift the hips, downward dog. From your downward dog, walk your feet up to your hands. Come up into a halfway lift, pinning the belly in, tucking the shoulders down, and then exhale, fold into Uttanasana. You can soften the knees, you can bend the knees as much as you need to. Tuck the chin. Maybe lift the hips to get a deeper stretch. And then curl up. Rest into Dasana, mountain pose. Palms together, shoulders down. Spread your toes. You can have the toes touching, the big toes touching with a gap between the heels or you can have the feet set a little bit wider. So just what's comfortable for you when you're standing in Siddhasana. Breathe in and out of the nose, soften the breath. Feel the weight spread across the feet, gently gripping the big toes down. And we're just going to go through our basic salutation, just build some heat into the body. So we're moving fairly quickly through this. Just go at your own pace. If we're all going at a slightly different pace, that's fine. When you're ready, bring the arms up. Inhale, reach up, grow tall, and then fold on the way down. Every time you fold, see how fur much further you can fold into Uttanasana. To begin with, you might have to have a really deep bend in the knees. Lift the eyes, place the hands to the ground, step to plank. You can always add a jump in at any point. From your high plank, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana, coming straight through to Urdha Mukha Svanasana, upward dog. And lift the hips downward dog. And then from downward dog, we can jump or step to the top of the mat. Make that jump as hard or as easy as you like. Bring the hands up to the shins, inhale. Exhale, compress the belly to the thighs, fold Uttanasada. Curling up, palms together, reach up. And fold back into Uttanasada. Lift the eyes, step or jump. If you jump, land low, push high. And then go back through Chaturanga Dandasana. Coming onto the tops of the feet, upward dog. Lift the hips, downward dog. Maybe each time you try and hop the hips higher into more of a handstand hop. And then land to the top of the mat. Have some fun with it. Take the hands up, inhale. And exhale, fold. Curl up, palms together, reach up. Folding on the way down. Lift the eyes, step or jump. Lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog, Urdha Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, downward dog. Good. Lift the eyes, step or jump. Take the hands up to the shins. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Curling up, palms together, reach up. Focusing on moving in time with your breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Folding down, stepping to plank. Move in your own time, coming through to upward dog when you're ready and back to downward dog. And then from there, lift the eyes, step or jump. Come up to a halfway lift and fold. We're going through the same flow five more times. So you can go as fast or as slow as you like. Reach up, inhale, fold Uttanasana. 
Lift the eyes, step or jump. Chaturanga Dandasana, breathing naturally. Listen to your body and your breath. From downward dog, lift the eyes, step or jump. Coming up to a halfway lift, fold Uttanasana. Lifting, curling up, lifting the eyes, reach up. Four more times through, folding down Uttanasana. Lift the eyes, step or jump to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Lift the eyes, step or jump. Coming up high into that halfway lift, exhaling into Uttanasana. Curling up, reaching up. Three more times through, folding down. Keeping that connection with your breath. Coming to plank when you're ready. Chaturanga Dandasana on your exhale. Lifting up to upward dog and back to downward dog. Lift the eyes from downward dog, step or jump. Come up to a halfway lift, down fold. Curling up, hopefully those folds starting to lengthen a bit more, twice more through. Inhaling and exhaling into your fold. Lift the eyes, step or jump. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Lifting the eyes, stepping or jumping. Coming up to a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Last one through, curl up, reach up. Exhale, fold. This is like slow motion burpees. Come up to our halfway lift, step to plank. Lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, up with dog. Exhale, down with dog. Lifting the eyes, stepping or jumping. Come up to our halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. Once you finish this salutation, curling up to standing into Tadasana, palms together at the chest. No rush to be there if you've not quite finished. Set the feet, either toes together or feet slightly separated. Hope you're feeling some warmth in the body now. Palms can be at the chest. What we're actually gonna do from here is open up through the chest and the shoulders and the spine. So take the hands behind you, interlace your fingers, press the palms together. If your shoulders are tight, it might help to hold a yoga strap with the palms facing your bum or a towel, okay? All we're gonna do from here is roll the shoulders back, puff the chest out and open, squeeze the bum and press the hips open as well. Take a breath in, exhale, soften the knees, fold, take the arms up and over with you. In that deep stretch into the, into the chest and the shoulders, working into that shoulder extension. Maybe lift the hips a bit higher if your hamstrings will allow it. Soften the knees and curl all the way back up to standing. Raise the arms up. Lock the ribs in and down, squeeze the bum. We're gonna interlace the fingers and bring the arms out in front now. Palms are facing your chest. Round out. It's like a standing cat and cow. So tuck the chin. Take the arms back up and overhead. Open the arms in a nice big circle and then take the hands behind you ready to go again. Press the palms together, roll the shoulders back, puff the chest out, squeeze the bum. If I squeeze the bum here, it stops me pushing weight into my lower back. So think about an expansion through the chest. Maybe you can start to go into a bit more of a back bend, but just listen to your body. From there, coming up, softening the knees, taking the arms up and over. Again, perhaps lifting the hips a bit higher if the hamstrings will let you. Keep the shoulder blades pinned into the back. And then again, curling up, take the arms up and overhead. With the palms together, don't allow the belly to, and the ribs to pop open here. Pin them down, squeeze the bum. Nice big back stroke all the way out. Oh, I missed this bit. Interlace the fingers and round out. It doesn't matter which way we do it, as long as we do it. So round out, tuck the chin. Take the arms up again, nice big backstroke. Interlace the fingers, 
roll the shoulders back, press the palms together, coming back into one more back bend. Only going to where feels good for you. Focus on the chest opening, the thoracic opening. And then coming up, folding over, softening the knees, bringing the arms up and overhead. Breathe into this one for a little bit longer. Lift the hips if you can. And then from here, lift the eyes. Don't come all the way up. Just release the hands and bring the hands to the mats. Step to plank. Lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Upward Dog. Exhale, Downward Dog. In your Downward Dog, raise the right leg up. You can raise it high, you can raise it low, you can internally rotate that back thigh or you can open it out. Do a little bit of a mixture of all of it because you'll get into different areas in the hamstrings. So mix it up. Maybe you bend the top knee and open the hip that way. Play around with it. Just a couple more breaths. And then when you're ready, draw the right knee into the chest and step your right foot up outside your right hand. Lower the back knee down. So with the back knee lowered, you've got the option of hooking the toes, which might help protect the knee a little bit more, or you can unhook them, or you can extend the leg. Wiggle about into the hips a little bit, breathing into it. Maybe you can come onto the forearms, but it might be a little bit too early on for that. So listen to your body, don't force anything. From here, from our deep lunge, we're going straight back to downward dog, lift the hips, send that foot back. And then from your downward dog, your right knee is going to come forwards and connect to the right wrist. We then extend the back leg back and come into a pigeon. Okay, so from this pigeon position, if it's feeling too intense or you haven't got a block handy to put under the front thigh, you can alternatively bend your back knee and have your legs into more of a 90-90 position and then just fold over the front leg with that back knee bent. It doesn't have to be extended. You're still going to work into the outer hip and glue with this leg bent out to the side anyway. So just see what works for you as you're not really warming the hips yet. We're only staying here for a couple of breaths. We're going back to downward dog. So when you're ready, place the hand shoulder width at the top of the mat, hook your back toes, press into that back foot to lift the hips and go back to your downward dog. And we'll go to the other side. So we'll raise the left leg up, playing around with that variation of having the leg up high, internally rotating that thigh and taking it lower, feeling different areas of the hamstrings benefiting from different positions. Mix it up. You can bend the knee and open the hip if you did that on the other side. And then when you're ready to tuck the knee into the chest, take the foot up outside the left hand, lower the back knee down. Hands are inside that front foot. Wiggle about into the hips a little bit, move around. You can elevate the back knee if that felt good on the other side. Keep that connection with your nasal breath. Gentle inhales, gentle exhales. Let the body open up. So then from here, when you're ready, press through the hands, lift the hips down with dog. And we're going to pigeon on this side as well. So we just take the left knee towards the left wrist and then take your back leg back, squaring the hips or stacking them above the mat as best you can. Like I said, you can bend your back knee out to the side and come into a little bit more of a 90-90 position, but you should really just be feeling this into the front outer hip and glute. Couple more breaths. And then from here, place the hands down, hook the back toes, lift the hips down, we're done. Walking through the feet, extend the legs if you can, maybe ground the heels, but don't force it. 
wrap the shoulders across the back, take the head through, and then pin the lower ribs in. Have a little play around with your shoulders here. So a lot of the time you'll hear me say, wrap your shoulder blades across your back. Also have a go at elevating the shoulder blades. So you'll feel them kind of drawing up and in a little bit more, which is a bit more relative to your handstand as opposed to wrapping away. So have a little play with moving the shoulder blades about on the back. You can go up and down, wrap them across, draw them in. And then when you're ready, lift the eyes, step or jump to the top of the mat. Bring the hands up to the shins, tuck your shoulders down into your back and exhale, fold. Slowly curl up, stand into Tadasana, mountain pose, palms together at the chest. If you need a drink, have a drink. So from standing, we're going to take the feet a bit wider than hip width. So separate the feet. And then from that position, you can actually step back a bit. So you position yourself more into the middle of your mat. Feet just outside the hips. Step your left foot back. So your right foot's out in front. So take the hands to the hip crease. Roll the shoulders back. Open the chest. Begin to hinge from your hips. Keep the eyes lifted. And think about leveling your hips off. So don't let your right bum cheek stick out to the side. Push the right foot cheek back as you start to hinge and fold. Maybe taking your belly towards your thigh, maybe bringing the hands down, doesn't matter how low you can go, just listen to your body. You can elevate the hands on blocks, tuck your shoulders down to the back, and it might take you a good 10 rounds of breath to be getting lower, so just let it happen naturally and gradually. You can keep the hands on the hips or you can place them down. Eyes stay lifted. This will stop you wanting to hunch and round through the upper back. I tend to find keeping my eye fixated on my big toe helps to stop me then wanting to round out. Deep breathing. Couple more breaths. And then all we're going to do from here is take all of that weight into your front foot. You can ground the hands on top of yoga blocks. You can hold one ankle with, with your right hand. But otherwise, hands can base out on the floor as you lift the back leg up into a single leg standing split. And again, it's not about getting this top leg all the way up to the ceiling. You might only lift it a few inches. That's fine. Have a soft bend in the standing leg if that helps to protect your knee and doesn't force the hamstrings to lengthen too much. Each exhale, try fold a bit deeper. For those of you a bit more flexible, maybe you can take your head down towards your shin, look up towards the top foot. Slowly bring yourself out, lifting the eyes, connecting your back foot back in so your feet are side by side, and then curl up nice and soft. Good. From here, we're gonna do the same on the other side. So feet separate just outside the hips, this time, step your right foot back, hands to the hip crease, roll the shoulders back, hinge from the hips leading with the chest, start to fold over that front leg. Keep the eyes lifted. So good 10 rounds of breath here, gradually letting the body open up into it on those exhales. Feel a contraction in the abdominal muscles as they're trying to pull down towards that front thigh. Pull up on the quadricep muscles, the muscles above your knees. Engage them. Level the hips. Think about, imagine you're squeezing your inner thighs together. So you're pushing your left hip bone back. Hands can come to the floor or they can stay on the hips. So from here, when you're ready to, you can have a little bit longer if you need to, but if you're ready to go in, we will elevate the back foot. So you can maybe hold your left ankle with your left hand as you lift the back leg up or have both hands out in front of you.
Breathe into it. Slowly bringing that top leg back down to connect to the side of the other foot and then curl up softly through the spine. Bring yourself up to standing into Dasana. Well done. Hamstrings probably feeling quite a bit more open now. We're going to come into Utkatasana from here and build a bit more heat. So coming into chair pose, your feet can be hip width of under the pelvis or you can have them together. Do what feels good for your body. Take your arms back behind you, inhale. As you exhale, sit down into imaginary chair, raise the arms up, pin your rib cage in and down rather than flaring it out, pin it in. Lift the eyes, tuck the shoulders down. Exhale, sit deeper, your knees can travel forward, so allow them to. Grip the big toes down, breathe into it. And then on your exhale, fold over the legs, lift the hips into Uttanasana. Breathe into this fold. Lift the eyes, hands can come to the ground, maybe add a little balance from here. So you can spread the fingers, collect the legs into the tops of the arms, coming into Kakasana, press down, pull the toes towards your butt. Keep pushing. From here, step or jump back. If you jump back, engage the lower belly, tuck the bum under. And then from our high plank, we'll lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Wrapping the shoulders, pinning the ribs in. Raise your right leg up. Draw the knee into the chest and step the foot up between the hands. Raise up into a high lunge. The back knee can bend, we can tuck the bum under, or we can extend that back leg as long as you don't feel lots of pressure into the lower back. Hands can separate. Breathe into it, push down through the feet. From here, maybe come into warrior one, ground through the back foot, square the hips to the front of the mat, pin the belly in tightly, breathe through the nose. Engage the thigh muscles in that back leg. Actively keep pushing both feet into the ground. And then from here, let's open up into warrior two. Tuck the bum under, pin the base of the ribs and the pelvis towards each other. Hands are in line with the shoulders. Hunch the shoulders up, draw them down. Make some waves with the arms. Breathe into it. Squeeze the bum, tuck it under. Making sure the front knee draws open. Feel the glutes engage. Flip the front palm, reach it forwards and then back to reverse the warrior. The top arm can bend. You can add a bind behind your head if that feels comfortable. Otherwise, keep the back hand on the back leg. From our reverse warrior, we're coming into warrior three. So we windmill the arms over to the front. If you've got a wall in front of you like me, you can use it to hold on to. Otherwise, you can bring your hands to your hips. Lift the back leg off the ground. Extend that back leg. Internally rotate this back thigh. Flex the foot. Hands can either be by the hips, trying to keep the hips nice and level above the ground. Feel the standing leg working hard to stabilize. Reaching the hands over in front will feel a little bit more challenging, so you can bring the hands by the hips if it feels too much. And then from here, take the back foot to the back of the mat, raise the arms back up into a high lunge. And from here, bring the hands down to the ground, step to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe. From your downward dog, raise the left leg up. And then when you're ready, draw the knee in, take the foot up between the hands and raise up into a high lunge. You can tuck the back knee, sorry, tuck the hips under, bend the back knee or extend it. Do what feels good. Pin the belly button in towards the spine. Palms can be together or hands can separate. And then from there, we can ground through that back foot. So we're now into our warrior one. 
Any discomfort in the back knee at all, just go back to your high lunge. From warrior one, open into warrior two. Tuck the bum under, pin the ribs down, hands in line with shoulders, punch them up, draw them down, make some waves. Breathe into it. Keep drawing the bent knee back and open, tucking the bum under. You should really feel the glutes working in this one. If you struggle to feel the glutes, then instead lift the heel, knee travels forwards, round the heel, really push it down. Flip the front palm, reach it forwards and back and reverse it. Engage the muscles in this back leg. If you reach the top arm up and over, you can bend the elbow. You can add a bind if you did that on the other side. Great lateral opening for the body, strengthening for the legs. Keep that back leg stabilized and then reach the arms over. Again, coming into warrior three. So the back leg lifts. You can hold on to something like me or reach the arms ahead or reach them down by your hips. Try and internally rotate this back leg, pin the belly in, breathe through the nose, squaring the body up above the ground. Feel the muscles in that standing leg and the foot working really hard to keep your body stable. And then from there, take your back leg to the back of the mat, raising the arms back up into a high lunge. Nice. From your high lunge, bring the hands down, step to plank, exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Let's do three handstand hops from here. So eyes lift just up between the hands, bend the knees, press down hard as you jump, tuck the feet up towards the bum, land back to a bent knee down the dog and go again. Once more, bend the knees, jump, landing up as high as you can. Take the hands to the shins, inhale, and then exhale, fold. Slowly curl up, rest, into dasana, mountain pose. Have a moment to breathe and recover. If you need to have a drink, have a drink. We're coming back to chair pose. So feet can be hip width or feet together. Take the arms back, inhale. Exhale, sit down into that imaginary chair. Let the knees travel forwards, pin the belly in. Lift the eyes up, don't arch the back and stick the bum out, slightly tuck it under. Sit deeper, see how low you can go. Sit as low as possible, but staying active. And then lift the hips a bit higher, fold over the legs, lift the hips high into Uttanasana. Nice fold, good job, breathe into it. So from Uttanasana, we'll come into a balance. You can come into your crow, or if you want to do a different balance, you can do single leg crow or crow to headstand. Have a bit of a play with it. You know where you're going from here, so it doesn't matter if we've got a slightly different pace. I'm just gonna do crow. So place the hands down, collect the legs, pulling the feet up, keeping the eyes lifted and pushing down into the ground. From crow, you're welcome to jump back. I'll show you the step back. So step to a high plank position. Otherwise, if you jump back, land low and then push high. So once we're in our high plank position, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. From downward dog, raise the right leg up. Breathe through the nose. Draw the knee in, step the foot up between the hands Raise up into a high lunge. Maybe this time take the arms behind you. Roll the shoulders back. Open the chest. A bit more of an extension for the spine. Focusing that extension primarily in the upper back, not the lower back. And then from here, take the arms back up. Open to warrior two. Extend your front leg. So your right foot is at the front of the mat. We're going to extend that right leg. Reach forward with the right fingertips and open the top arm up. Your front hand glides down the inside of the front leg, the top arm reaches up to the sky. Engage the quadriceps muscles above your knees. Feel the calves engaged, especially in that front leg. 
Feel that nice lateral opener for the body, squeeze the bum and make sure that your back hip doesn't internally rotate. Think about it drawing open. Keep breathing into it. Feel a nice deep stretch through the inside of your front leg and through the top side of the body into the outer hip. So from our triangle pose, we're coming into a half moon, which means you can come all the way up to standing first if you like. Otherwise, take your front hand in front of your front foot. You can bend the knee to do that. Then lift the back leg off the floor, lifting the top arm up. See if you can hover your bottom hand off the ground. Not an easy one. Make sure the back leg, the top leg, the foot is flexed and the thigh muscles are engaged, like you're kicking a door down. Nice, guys. Breathe into it. Take the back foot back to the ground. Lift the arms up back to warrior two. Extend your front leg. Bring your arms down. Well done. Square the chest to the front of the mat. Take a bit of a step in with that back foot. So we're going into our revolved triangle pose and then into revolved half moon. So take the left arm up, reach it forwards and take it onto your right leg, onto the front leg. The back hand goes to the lower back. So first of all, just stay here. You might not want to go any further than this, that's fine. Squeeze the inner thighs together so your right butt cheek pushes back and that'll keep the pelvis nice and neutral. Breathe into it, fill the hamstrings. If you feel like you can go further, take your front hand outside your front foot. You can use a yoga block to help. Pull up on the thigh muscles. Draw your back shoulder back and open. Start to revolve and twist. Maybe lift the top arm. Feel the outer hip and glute opening. Thighs engage, abdominals engage. There's a lot going on in this one. Breathe through the nose. Make sure your bottom hand isn't heavily pushing into the ground. You want to be able to almost just hover those fingertips off the floor if you can, or lightly touch the ground. And then from here, we'll go into revolved half moon. So the front hand goes in front of the front foot, start to shift all of your weight into that front leg, feel the back toes lift up, engage the inner thigh muscles and the glutes in that back leg to lift it. Again, maybe looking up at that top hand if you can. Don't worry if you can't, you can look down. And then from here, look down, place the hands to the ground and step to plank, well done. From plank, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Breathe. Raise the left leg up. Maybe open the hip. Draw the knee in, step the foot up between the hands and raise up into that high lunge. Maybe again, bring the hands behind you and open the chest. Sticking the chest out, promoting that extension from up here. And then raising the arms up, open into your warrior two. From warrior two, extend your left leg, your front leg. Reach forwards and open the top arm up into triangle pose. You see the trikonasana. The back hip doesn't want to draw in and down, draw it out and open. Squeeze the thigh muscles, muscles above your knees, engage the calves, expand out through the lateral side body. You can look up or down or let the ear drops to the shoulder. Couple more breaths. When you're ready to, take your front hand out in front of your front foot. Let the knee bend slightly. Press into that front leg. Lift the back leg up. Flexing the foot and externally rotating that back thigh. Feel the standing leg working hard to find balance. Maybe hover the bottom hand off the floor. Pin the belly button in tight. Well done. Take the back leg to the back of the mat into warrior two, extend the front leg. And then we're gonna switch the arms. So the right arm now comes up. 
Hips are square to the front of your mat, reach it forwards and take it onto the front shin or ankle, but keep the back nice and long. Squeeze the inner thighs together. You can stay here, that might be enough. You can come higher up the shin if you need to. If you want to go a bit further, the front hand goes outside the front foot. Squeeze the inner thighs together even more. Start to look back and twist. Maybe lift the top arm up. Engaging the legs, not pushing all that weight into the bottom hand. Feel the quads engage, the belly engage. When you're ready, transitioning into revolved half moon, the bottom hand reaches forward, shift the weight into the standing leg, lift the back leg, feeling the glutes and the inner thigh. Nice and slowly bring the hands to the ground, step to plank, exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. From downward dog, Let's hop three times, hands on hop, set the eyes, bend the knees, jump. Transitioning that weight into the hand, pushing hard, bend the knees, jump. Take them back, one more. Landing at the top of the mat, bring your hands up. Inhale, hand exhale, fold. Slowly curl up to standing and rest into Dasana. Breathe into it. From Tadasana, we're going to step one leg back, doesn't matter which one, we're going for a wide leg stance. Make it easier for you to watch me. So, I'll try and mirror you on this one. <laughs> when you're ready, turn your right toes forward. This will be where I confuse you. Take the arms up for warrior two arms and bend your right knee. Good. So they're going to take the right elbow onto the thigh and bring the back arm up and over. So we're now on a side angle lunge from here. The bottom elbow can push the front knee open. So it's inside the knee. Feel the legs engage. Squeeze the bum. Keep pushing down. Maybe the bottom hand finds the ground. The top arm can go behind your back. You can add a bind here. Take the bottom arm under the thigh. Lift the chest. And if you want to go to Bird of Paradise, hop that back foot in. Press through the standing leg. Starting to lift the eyes up as you lift the leg up. And you can just go into the bent knee variation. If your hamstrings can take it, extend the leg. Otherwise, just keep it bent. From there, step the foot back down, hop back into your side angle lunge. From your side angle lunge, we're going to turn, take the hands inside that foot and lower the back knee. Good. So hands are inside our right foot. And all we're gonna do from here is open into the hips, just back into that lizard lunge that we did earlier. Maybe you can get the forearms down now if you couldn't before, see how it feels. The options from here, a couple of variations. You can either just spend a minute or so going back into the hamstrings and into the hips, moving in and out of those two positions. Or you can have a play around with your flying splits. Flying splits, I want to be able to get my shoulder underneath my front thigh, press into the hands, treat this like a crow balance. I'm gonna push, bend the elbows, push down, shuffle my front leg forward, and then lift the back leg up. Keep the eyes lifted. If you can't extend your front leg, just keep it bent. Don't force your hamstrings there if they don't want to be there. So you can play around with that balance just for a moment. Otherwise, spend time in the hips and the hamstrings, working on that mobility. And then when you're ready, we're going to come up into a lunge position. So lift the chest up. Okay, palms are together at the chest. Take a breath in, you're gonna to twist to your right and take your elbow outside the thigh, press the palms together, engage the back leg if you can and lift the knee. You need to keep it down, you can keep it down. So in a deep twist here, the transition from this position with the back knee lifted or the back knee down is to get the elbows outside the front thigh 
and then come into side crow with the leg extension. So both hands can come to the floor, collect the outer hip, and then engage the leg muscles and come into that balance. Have a little play with it. If that variation feels impossible, then hop your back leg in, going into a partial squat and come into your side crow from there. Nice guys. Breathe into it, lovely, great balancing. So, once you're ready to come out of it, don't rush, just in your own time. We're in that side lunge with a twist, and all we're gonna do is turn into a high lunge, and then stand all the way up into our wide leg stance. Nice, good. Okay, so feet are wide. We're now gonna turn the left toes forward. and get in there, bring the arms up. Bend into your front knee. Take the left elbow down, top arm up and overhead. Pin the belly in, lengthen this top arm. Bottom elbow pushes the knee open. Breathe into it, push into the legs. You can stay here or the bottom hand can find the floor. You can stay here or bring it behind you. And again, you can stay in this side lunge position, find the bind and make your way into bird paradise. So pressing through the standing leg, lifting the top leg, drawing that shoulder back and open. Slowly then maybe extending the leg. Keep the shoulders pinned back. If it's too much, keep it bent. In your own time, make your way back down. So from here, we'll de-rotate, take the hands inside the front foot, lower the back knee, and you're back into a lunge. And you can move in and out, hips to hamstrings. Breathe into them. If and when you're ready, have a go at flying splits on this side as well, but feel free to skip that out. So if you're flying splits, we're getting shoulder underneath the thigh, collecting the leg so with the back of that arm, shuffle the foot forwards, push down hard, lift the back leg up, engage the legs. Feel the glutes working in that back leg to lift it up off the floor. So when you're ready from here, again, move at your own pace, you know where you're going. So we can come up into our lunge position, palms together. Inhale to prepare and then twist to your left. Take the elbow outside the thigh. Press the palms together, lift the chest up, maybe hook the back leg and extend it. You can stay here or play around with your balance. So if you're going into your balance, the back knee can be down or up. Add a big twist, bring the hands to the ground, collect the outer hip, engage the legs and pull them apart. Nice guys. Well done. From there, we're back into that lunge with a twist. All we're going to do is turn the chest to the front of the mat, stand up, back into our wide leg stance. Well done. Making our way down to the floor, toe heel your feet in and come down into a squat. So feet are just a bit, so hip width, maybe a bit wider. From your squat, sit onto your bum and straight away bring the legs up. Just one hold in boat pose. If you're struggling with this tonight, just hold the legs, hold the calves, you can bend the knees, breathe into it. And we've got a whole minute here. So play around with any variation. If you're working more flexibility, you can walk the hands up the legs, seeing if we can compress the chest, the thigh, maybe even taking the head to the shins. If your hamstrings don't let you do that, see if you can then hold it with strength. So that's your active range. That's your passive range. Mix it up, you can play around with taking the legs wide, reaching the arms through. Whew, it's a difficult one. Reaching forwards, bringing them back in again, taking them back out again. See how long you can do it before you fall over. <laughs> Keep breathing into it. Nice work, guys.
a little bit longer, about five breaths. Stay with it. Nice. Keep breathing in and out of the nose. Keep lifting that chest as tall as you can. Okay, bring the legs down from here. Extend them out in front. Raise the arms up. Inhale, exhale. Fold into Paschimottanasana. Hamstrings are doing a lot of work tonight. You can bend the knees here if they're still feeling quite tight. Don't force them straight. Tuck your shoulders down into your back. Keep the eyes lifted towards the big toes. It will stop you crunching through the upper back. See if you can get your chest down instead of head down. Keep compressing that chest down towards the thigh. Well done. Slowly bring the body up. From here, shuffle your bum forwards. You can hold onto the thighs, or if you want to build more strength, have the hands out to the side. And lie down. Nice. Okay. So from here, you've got a couple of options. You can either grab a yoga block, tuck the bum under, lift the hips and support the lower back top of your bum onto a block and just relax here. And this way you can make your way into Shavasana from here and just relax on the block. If you want to do something a little bit more active, tuck the bum under, lift the hips, press through the heels and stay here, building some strength into the back of the body. Push the feet into the floor, keep squeezing the glutes, feel the hamstrings working. And if you want to go into wheel, place the hands either side of the ears, about shoulder width, spread the fingers, push through the feet, push through the arms, taking the head through the shoulders like looking through a window. Press the legs into the ground to open the chest. Internally rotate the thighs. Don't let the knees pop out wide. And then when you've had enough, slowly come down to the shoulders, lowering down through the back onto the ground. From here, guys, maybe come into a nice, easy reclining pigeon. You can have one foot over the other thigh, rock into the hips a little bit, switch both sides, or come into a happy baby, holding the outer edges of the feet, pressing the lower back into the ground. Again, just rocking side to side. Anything that feels good for you. And then before coming into Shavasana, it might also feel nice to just rock up to the shoulders, support the hips, draw the knees towards the head or extend the legs over. Once you're ready to, you can slowly start to roll down into Shavasana relaxation, finding a position that feels good for your body. So you can have feet wide, knees touching, palms open to the ceiling, shoulders relaxed, or feet together and knees open, or just lengthen the whole body out. Soften your jaw, rest your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And just bring your awareness back to your breathing. Gentle inhales, gentle exhales. Count how many seconds it takes to inhale. See if you can lengthen your exhale. Just let it happen naturally, but just see if you can add a little bit more time onto that breath out. <laughs> 